Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening. We've got our new podcast that's out, The Entrepreneurial Success. Without further ado, let's jump right into the pod. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening to my podcast. My name is Glenn Cruz. I'm the host, and my podcast is Managing with Common Sense. And today's podcast, the episode, is about entrepreneurial success. And my guest today is Robin Orsini. Welcome, Robin, to the pod. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's awesome to have you. So, have you on a pod? Tell us, my my listeners, and now I have viewers apparently because I have a YouTube channel now. Tell, give us a give us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm Robin, and I am based in Montreal, born and raised in Canada, and in Montreal. Um, I currently run Luna's Consulting, which is a company that I just started about a year ago, um, and also I'm the co-founder of Loadly and Smart SaaS. I'm currently in the works of opening up another project, so very busy, <laughs> but um, also a little bit of an early entrepreneur, just starting to open some companies in the past couple of years. What motivated you to open up these companies? Um, I, I've seen it. I look in your LinkedIn profile, and I'm like. Like, like you said, you're busy and <laughs> hoping, hoping you'll have some mental days for yourself once in a while here, but tell me a little about yeah. like what motivated you to open up these companies. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I definitely am busier than I've ever been to be honest, but um, it's, it's kind of interesting. So I started my career, I started working um, in a, in a bunch of different tech communities and then started to work for some nonprofits, um, helping different tech companies to commercialize. I ended up really falling in love with it, falling in love with the nonprofit world and just falling in love with what I was doing. Um, so I ended up leaving the job that I was currently at to work as a consultant to just kind of help people a little bit more directly and then also start making a salary from it because, you know, working for a nonprofit doesn't exactly uh, pay the bills that much. So yeah. <laughs> I started working as a consultant and, you know, actually as working through a consultant, I just ended up getting a lot of different referrals from clients and I just ended up going better and better. And then eventually I just had a lot of clients on my own and I ended up hiring a lot of people to help me. So at some point I was like, oh, I guess I got to open up a corporation because I have a lot of people working for me now and it's better for my taxes. So actually what motivated me is really just loving, loving what I was doing, loving the clients I was working with, and then realizing that I can, can scale and I can grow. And then with the other companies, it kind of just fell alongside of that. I saw some projects that I really, really was interested in and said, okay, sure. Like I'll do this with you. Um, you know, with smart SaaS, it's, it hasn't launched yet, but it's with two other consultants that I met in the field. And it's very much a product of working at Lunas and having Lunas and founding it and then creating like a bunch of documentation and a bunch of knowledge on like what SaaS companies in particular and startups um, sometimes fail at. And then just wanting to create something out of the material that we already have to help some courses and things like that. So it kind of like is symbiotic in that way that they kind of go together. So it seems like a lot of work, but it's really taking a lot of things that I just learned and did throughout my career and, and putting it in a way that could sell it. So that's pretty much it. It, it. It's not like that much of a, of a cool story. It's, it's really just like things ended up working out really, really well. Yeah. But, but it is a cool story. I'm like, literally you have <laughs> Luna, you have smart SAS and you have lowly. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lowly kind of impressed me because it deals with the trucking company. And when yes. I used to work for uh, a law firm, a labor law firm, and they, they had the whole entire U.S. trunking company as, you know, as their client um, against their unions, which is pretty awesome. Um, and just reading about it in your LinkedIn profile, it just blew my mind. I'm like, oh, this is so amazing for, for trucking companies because it's needed. Technology yeah. is needed. It is needed. Them. it is needed yeah and if people don't people are listening and the people are watching when you look at robin like everyone thinks of an entrepreneur as an old white male (laughs) i'm gonna be honest right yeah yeah yeah. i mean i mean i think there's only like the stats of something like there's only 20 percent of female entrepreneurs right now so it's we're 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 growing though. It's more than it was a few years ago. That's for sure. <laughs> and when I saw your profile and you reached out to me and I was like, I don't have an entrepreneur yet on my podcast. <laughs> and I, I, when I, when I read, read what you're doing, I was like, I got to have her on 
one, she's young. And two, how much of an inspiration you will be to all my all the young listeners I will hopefully I will have or people will watch. So I like, you know, like, hey, Robin's young. I could be an entrepreneur too. So I'm excited to have you on and your drive. Yeah, let's, I mean, you get things going and on, on a daily basis, what just drives you? This, like, if you could explain that to a middle school person, no school person, well, you know, little human, I'll say a little human. Uh, I have two boys and you're about to go into middle school. Oh boy, whole new challenges right there. But anyway, um, what is, what, what can you tell that middle school kid who are looking for that drive? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think for me, I, I really, really, really love what I do. So it, I, I feel a lot of drive. I love working for myself. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's just the kind of thing where I wake up and I'm really happy with what I do. I am extremely busy. I work really, really, really hard. And it's not easy. Like, I would say that it is a lot of work. But it's really, 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 really rewarding. And you learn a lot. I think I've learned more in the past years than I've ever learned in my entire life, just about business and about entrepreneurship and just about like just working so hard and how that feels. But I think the biggest piece of advice I can give anyone is just find something you really love, something you're really passionate about, and then put all your drive towards that. And whether that's being an entrepreneur, whether that's being anything, I think you just, you just really need to have the drive if you love it. There's days that of course, like you're not going to love every single day just because it's a lot of work. And there's a lot of of days that are not 100% great. But I think what motivates me and what makes me have that drive is the results and knowing that everything that I'm doing is because I really love it and because, and because I'm seeing a lot of results from my hard work. So like, there's a really a direct impact when you're an entrepreneur because you see your company grow, you see the revenue grow, you see how much, even just how much documentation you create, how many things you learn, how many books you read. So there's really just like an upwards ladder of how much growth you have, which drives me a lot because it's, it's just, I'm the kind of person that gets bored pretty easily and you can never be bored being an entrepreneur because every single day you have so much to do and so much is different so I would say find something that you love and then make sure it's something that you want to grow in and continue to grow and that you like learning about yeah so having that drive there's obviously going to be failures oh yeah (laughs) of course Um, and oh you know when, when people talk in like some shows they, they they'll talk to like you know i don't know like bill gates or whoever it is and they never talk about majority of their failures and i like to yeah. talk about failures and w- how do you overcome your failures and do you even see it coming because i know for us you, we use the word blind spots a lot as oh that's a yeah. blind spot and so how do you as an entrepreneur and working with you know these three companies you have Man, that's a lot on your plate. <laughs> but I was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just so impressed by you. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. And how is, how, how do you overcome failures? Um, I know how, but audience may not, yeah. may not. And please yeah. explain of how, how do you deal with it, and how do you overcome them? Okay. Yeah, and I think I've gotten much better at overcoming failures. That just because I've had so many of them, and as an entrepreneur and owning a company, you're just going to consistently have things that are not perfect, you know, you know, starting the company was not something that I planned of any of them. (laughs) Like I never, I I planned to be a therapist, actually. That's what I went to school for. I was a hypnotherapist before, and that's actually what my career path was going in. That's another story. But when I started doing this, it was like, even just being in sales, right? So I've been in sales for 12 years. You face a lot of failure and a lot of disappointment with quotas and people saying no to you. And I think the way that I deal with it is by the time I have a failure, I'm already working on the next thing that it's, I'm just so busy that I realize, okay, I failed at this, but like, I can't just fail. I need to figure out what I learned from this, what solutions I have for this, because I can't just, I can't just only fail, right? Because then the company fails and people are disappointed. Like there, there's no room to dwell on the failure is what, I, what I'm trying to say. I think I just became really good at pushing forward and really good at accepting my failures and taking them as lessons. Um, you know, I, it's obviously kind of a cheesy thing to say, but there is no success without all of that failure at all. Like if you don't experience failure, then you're probably doing something really wrong. Like you're, something probably is not 
working that you don't realize because the failures are actually great, right? Yeah. Every time I realize I did something poorly or maybe I didn't do it to the best of my ability or I just didn't know, I then have the opportunity to go and redo it and, and, and make that mistake no longer a mistake. So good example is when I started, like I didn't really, I didn't know anything about like accounting or finance and all this kind of stuff. Like I just kind of like, I'll figure it out as I go. And obviously that's silly. <laughs> like You can't just figure it out as you go. But, um, you know, you realize what you're doing. You're like, okay, I need like some really good accountants. Like I shouldn't be doing this. And like, I think hiring people and getting people in the right positions to help you um, obviously helps with failure, but also just putting yourself in the right position to realize what you're really good at and what you're not so good at and what you need to improve. So the failures really, really, really help for that. If anything, I think they're probably the most important thing about being an entrepreneur is realizing all the things that you need to improve because nothing starts out perfect. That's true. And when you had your failures, and I know in my beginning, in my beginning when I would fail, I would take it personal. How long did it take you from, okay, it's no longer personal. It's, it's just something we have to overcome. Do you know how yeah. long that took you to, to overcome that? Uh, yeah, I think in the past couple of years. So I think before when I was working for other people, I would take things really seriously because it wasn't my business. And I would feel really bad if like I wasn't 100% giving the results that they expected out of me, right? Yeah. And now that I have a lot of them, like now that I have employees, now that I have people that work for me, I realized that on the other side of it, of course, things are not always going to be perfect. And you really want to encourage like your employees and encourage them to know that it's all right to not hit it every single time. You know, results are important, but you also have to be a human being. So I think I just started to look at myself that same way um, and just stop taking it personally. I, I think it happened probably like a couple months after I opened my company because I did get a lot more confident because of the reasons I opened up my company and realizing that I was getting a lot of referrals. And to this date, um, pretty much I think almost every single client we have has come through a referral or has come through an inbound. We don't really do that much outbound sales because we just haven't had the need to yet. We will soon to scale a little bit, but um, in general, and I'm talking about Lunas, by the way, because the other companies yeah. are still quite, quite fresh, <laughs> but no, no worries. Um, yeah. But you know, it, it just kind of, kind of, I stopped feeling that way when I started owning the business myself, I think, because if it's a failure, it's, not personal to me it's not personal to my employees it's just something that we need to learn from do you express that with your employees like hey yeah. it's okay to fail and we're just going to move forward because a lot of entrepreneurs or ceos they they i don't know why sometimes they're afraid to say something like that i mean it's, it's okay to be vulnerable and, yes and that's the challenge with some because ego gets in the way you know and and if they're just doing it for themselves and it's, it's definitely arrogant ego where your employees are not looking for that. They're looking, you know, a human side of you and looking for vulnerability. It's like, cause I expressed to my staff, I'm like, okay, I apologize. I messed up. Let's move forward. So how, since you're, you're owning these companies, I say companies, <laughs> um, how do you, how do you let your employees know it's okay to fail? And, and it's, you know, yeah. overcome these, you know, barriers and I'm vulnerable too, you know? So how do you, how do you do that and say, Hey, I'm human too. Yeah. Well, one of our, I think it's, it starts with how you act with your employees and the way that you treat people. Um, and I always try to come from a place of like, okay, this is a mess up and that's fine. I'll work with you and I'll help you to, to figure it out, but it's not, it's never the end of the world. Right. Um, one of our company values is we are always learning. Um, and, you know, it goes a little bit deeper than that, but it just means like, we will always try to get to the, to the next, like, like finish line. Right. So it's okay. If there's some things that aren't perfect right now, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to like, it's okay. Right. So I, I think actually in my career, the thing that I've had more of a problem with is never being too kind about mistakes and things like that. I think it was the opposite. So the other, the other hard thing that I had to learn was if you've ever read the book radical candor that really helped me a lot because also just being direct and being a little bit more um assertive when things are really like there's a lot of mistakes <laughs> you know and there's things that yeah. you really need to improve so of course it's all right to have a couple of mistakes here and there but I think actually the only thing that I really struggle with is the opposite where I have to be more direct and more assertive and 
if there's a lot of mistakes, then just be a little bit more, you know, a little, a little, a little bit more to the point that, that it can't always happen like that. So I think mistakes are totally fine. I've never, I've never had an issue with, with that. Um, I think the harder thing that I, that I've like spoken about to a lot of entrepreneurs and to, to my close friends too, is getting to the other side of it. How do you, how do you act when it's too many mistakes and, and you want to help them, but you don't want to be too mean. So that's, that's probably where radical candor is really, really amazing. And you use that kind of framework and it helps a lot. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm honestly, I don't read books. If it's an audible, mm -hmm. I'll listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, it's all good. But the, usually when you go direct, when I go direct, it, I usually find it's, not usually the team it's rarely the team if it's a team then yeah you know then let's have this meeting about it but it's mostly just that one person do you get direct with that one person than anything else or do you actually get direct with the team so kind of like yeah. coats it like everyone you're all you know you're all in trouble but not really you're, you're, you're but yeah. it's more like yeah or do you just direct it to one person well, I think it depends, right? Like it depends on yeah. the, if it, sometimes it is the team, like if it's a lot, like I can, I can see, like if I can see that it's everyone kind of makes that mistake, I'll have a group meeting and I'll say, okay, guys, like I've noticed this, is there a reason? Can I help you? But this like has to stop type thing or this can't happen. Like we can't have this mistake. If it's one person, then I'll just be direct with them. Yeah, like I'll like, so even if you haven't read the book, Radical Candor, it's pretty simple. It's the idea that you are doing a disservice to people if you're not giving them that kind of direct feedback. And it, it, it's, it's just saying things like, hey, I noticed that you did this or like you are continuously making this X mistake or whatever it is. Um, let me know if there's something that I can do. Is there a reason? And kind of coming from a place of understanding, but really calling it out and saying like, this, this is something that needs to be improved, you know? And, and it doesn't have to be like, oh my God, you made this mistake. This is terrible. Like I'll never say something like that, but it can always come from a place of like just giving direct feedback that this is not up to the standards that they should be. But yeah, it, yeah, it depends on the situation. It could be the individual, it could be the team. It depends on who's, who's, who's making the mistakes. And I'm glad you, uh, for you, you can recognize that because a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs or, see, you know, leadership role people can't even recognize that. And they just blame yeah. the whole group. And they're like, well, I did my part. It's like, well, it's the individual that they should, you know, and it, it's all on, on learning. Like, I love, I love the, um, your motto at, at your, mm -hmm. at Luna is le learning every day. And that's what I coach yeah. is you learn every yeah. day. Right. Cause people say, you know, I'm, you know, they could say like, uh, Phil Jackson is the, you know, he's the master of all coaches. Like, no, no, no one's ever a master. Cause yeah, you're learning every day. Right. Yeah. So let's shift gears. There's two things I want to talk about. One thing is using some common sense in, in being an entrepreneur. And mm -hmm. if you work with other entrepreneurs, how do they, you know, sometimes you'd want to say, can you just use some common sense when, if you're thinking about something? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like I've had really, really, really the luxury of learning from a lot of really amazing entrepreneurs. So um, my boyfriend has two companies himself and he teaches me a lot. And when I started, I think I just learned immediately from a lot of mistakes that he's done because he's been doing it for 10 years, right? Yeah. Um, one of our really amazing best friends is the founder of Clearbit, which is a really, really big company. Um, he wrote this book called The Manager's Handbook. I read that. That really helped me a lot. Um, and yeah, of course, I've seen people that I was just, you know, uh, like use a little bit of common sense. But I think, I think it depends on the context. Like one thing that I've seen over and over again that is a mistake that I think a lot of entrepreneurs make is them actually just not focusing on the right things. For example, getting the best out of the people that you already have and hiring really great people and just making a structure that works really well. Like it seems like it's, it seems like that's one of the things that I think in terms of common sense is really, 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 really lacking, I think in some organizations because they're, they're, they don't leverage the amazing people that they already have well enough or treat them well enough that the really amazing employees will wanna stay. So that's one thing that I've seen like time and time and time again, where I'm like, I, it's a little bit of common sense, you know? But I think overall, a lot of the, a lot of the people that I've met have 
probably taught taught me a lot, like really, really taught me a lot. In in the context of things that I could see done better, I can give you a whole list, but but um in general, I think a lot of that goes around goes goes to relate at least to things about how people treat their employees or how they train their employees or the communication they have with their employees. Um, you know, most people just like to be treated the same way that you'd like to be treated. And I think I've seen a lot of times where that's not the case, including with some managers that I've had in the past where I was just kind of like, wow, it, it's just like mind blowing that to me that you would like speak like that, you know, especially being like a woman in the tech world, there's not, there's not that many. And you'll hear things sometimes that are not necessarily appropriate. <laughs> and I mean, to me, that's like the very minimum of common sense. Like what, <laughs> like, why would you ever say something like that type thing? But, but I, I don't know, if, for lack of better words, if that's common sense or someone just being a jerk, <laughs> I don't know which one that falls into, but. That's, yeah. that's true. All right. So I have another question for you. And my question is, how'd you learn how to be an entrepreneur? a good question um I, I guess what part like how to like how to just be an entrepreneur when i'm an entrepreneur like well we learned about companies. your drive we learned about your okay. drive already right and yeah did you read books did you i know it okay. sounds like from our conversation alone that you've got great networking skills and you network a lot which i think being an entrepreneur you need to have that so you have a great team around you because if you, if you yeah. have no networking then yeah. you're not going to be successful. So networking and what books you read, what, you know, what educational training did you do? You know, people are like, what classes can I take to be an entrepreneur? Oh, no, no much yeah. classes. Yeah. So yeah. For, yeah. Okay. yeah. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a lot. So yeah. I think def definitely reading. Um, there's a cute few key books that come to mind, like from good to great, amazing book really helped me a lot. Four Steps to Epiphany. I can go on and on, but I, I definitely listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of books. Really, really, really helped me. Um, also, just when I was working in the nonprofit space, I got to meet a lot, a lot of startups and a lot of founders and learned a lot from them, asked them a lot of questions and kind of just kept like a very open mind to all the advice that they had and, and really tried to implement it. And then also from the people around me, like I was really lucky to be surrounded by amazing entrepreneurs. Um, you know, my partner comes to mind. I watched him like work like crazy for a long time and learned a lot from his experience and also from some of our other closer friends who have really amazing companies that are doing extraordinarily well. Like my company is like a tiny, tiny, tiny company. So learning a lot from them and I think just asking a lot of questions and asking for help. Um, the biggest, biggest, biggest piece of advice I could ever give anyone that's trying to be an entrepreneur, just ask for help from the people around you that you know have been entrepreneurs in the past. Go, go on groups, find ways to just ask people for advice. Because a lot of the times when I was struggling, um, I would just ask people like, hey, have you experienced this? What would you do? And just kind of point me in the right direction and read a book, read a podcast. Uh, sorry, listen to a podcast. But basically, I think a lot, a lot of learning from books, podcasts, asking people questions and, and learning from people that I think have done this really, really well. How'd you overcome asking? Because a lot of people won't ask. They'll just try to figure out and they get their pride in the way of not asking. How'd you overcome that? Yeah, I think I used to be a person that was shy to ask for help. I would say I was like that maybe three, four years ago. And I realized to be successful, you can't, you can't be like that. You need to ask for help. You need to admit that you're not ever going to be the best at anything. And the most successful people in the world are really, really, really good at asking questions and asking for help and learning from other people. Um, so you just kind of got to let it go. <laughs> like if you want to be really successful, if you want to be an entrepreneur, it's just something you have to get over because there is no one that is perfect in the industry. And to get better, to be better, you need to ask for help. You need to just continuously find people that can help you and network. And people usually are very, very, very happy to help too. And I think it's a good way to make friends in the industry. It's a good way to get connected to other people. So it's, it's very much a strength having the capability to feel confident enough or feel capable enough to ask for help. Wow. So got to ask you this. And we talked about, you talked about podcasts, talked about books. I want to talk about uh, a little bit about mentors and, or if you have a coach, mm -hmm. 
actually let's go about to mentors and coaches. If you have a mentor or a coach, either one doesn't really matter. And I'm going to, then we're going to jump into your top three podcasts and your top three books. So, <laughs> Oh, that's going to be tough. I love so many. <laughs> well, how about top three you would recommend to new entrepreneurs, right? Oh, yeah. Can, can, I know there's so many passionate ones you might, might have, but, but let's, let's help these people out here. <laughs> but let's talk about your mentors. Who are your mentors? Yeah. And, and who, or if you have a coach. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't have a coach right now. I, I have like a mentor for a very brief amount of time. Uh, when I was working at my previous, like my, the la like one of the last times I was an actual employee before I was working as a consultant, um, she was the VP at CGI, which is a pretty big company here in Canada. And that really helped me a lot, like a lot, a lot. <laughs> so that was really amazing. Um, and in terms of coaches and mentors that I have right now, I would honestly say my partner's a pretty big mentor to me. He also has two companies himself that are doing really well. So like directly just helps me a lot, like really, really, really helps me a lot. I remember when I was getting into consulting, I had told him something like, I don't think I'll ever make more than X amount of money. Like I'm going to get into this. And I was kind of like shy and had a lot of imposter syndrome. He was like, what are you talking about? You're going to make like five times that. And I, I just like, couldn't believe him at the time. I was like, I can't, I can't, like, I don't think I'm capable of that. So that he really, really helped me just to get motivated, how to, you know, have more confidence in myself and have more confidence in my abilities, you know, like how, like, and how to use my abilities, I would say. I think one thing that's really, really hard to do is to take the abilities that you have and also like put them to use, right? So there's that. And aside from him, I actually, I would say two people in one were a different kind of coach. So I met these two amazing consultants when I was starting to do consulting. And kind of one of the reasons why I opened up my company actually is because they kept on sending me referrals for clients. And I was just so inspired by them because they were in the same industry and sales and all of that. And I was just blown away by the amount of knowledge that they, that they have and that they knew. Right. So I think they really, really, really helped me a lot as well. So I kind of I think those are my other two. And then in the other bucket, because I, I feel like I have a lot of coaches, um, my other friends too, the, every time that I had a question or needed help, um, they really, really helped me, especially, especially just like how big their companies are and what they've been able to achieve and do has just been such a big, big um, influence in my life and just helped me a lot with the different questions and coachings that I've asked for them. Um, so those are my top three. So even though I gave a few more, <laughs> I know it's fine. <laughs> Shouts out to all of them. Robin loves you. <laughs> um, let's talk about top, th top three of your top three podcasts that could help okay. the young entrepreneur and those top three books. Yes. So there's, there's three. I think Baking Sense with Sam Harris is an absolute amazing one. Um, it's a big podcast. He has amazing guests on there. I would recommend it to anyone that wants to be an entrepreneur. Um, the Tim Ferriss Show, another one that's absolutely amazing. He talks to a lot of amazing people, a lot of amazing topics. Um, and then the third one, it's not as much about entrepreneurship, although I can mention other podcasts about entrepreneurship that are really amazing, but I really love the Oprah Super Soul podcast, actually. Oh. She's one of my favorite. Yeah, she's one of my favorite people in the entire world, um, and she has amazing guests on, and I think she's just helped me to just, in general, be a better person. Like, I don't know who doesn't love Oprah, <laughs> you know? Everyone um, loves Oprah. Like, every, you, have, you have to love Oprah. She's just such an incredible, incredible, incredible woman. Yes. Um, so... I just love that podcast and her voice is just so calming. And when I'm having like a bit of a rough day, she really helps me to just de-stress and she interviews a lot of amazing people. And I think that really helps. So those are probably the top three that I would list that I listen to the most. And what about for books? Yeah, that's hard. I love so many books. Okay. So I think the obstacle of the way by Ryan holiday, absolutely amazing book. Um, I read it a few times. It's really amazing when things are hard in your life and through being an entrepreneur, things get really difficult. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely not an easy job at all. So 
this is a really great book because it just teaches you how to deal with those kind of things. Um, one specifically related to entrepreneurship that I recommend everyone should read is From Good to Great. Amazing book, really goes over how to turn like a good company into an absolutely great one and just teaches you a lot of like foundational facts, right? And some other amazing stuff. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm having trouble because I just love so many books, but I, I think the third one, um, specifically about entrepreneurship, I think The Four Steps to Epiphany is an amazing book to read um, just because it kind of, yeah, it's really, really amazing. It teaches you like, now you have an idea for a company, what do you do? Like, what are the steps? Because I think it's, it, it, it lays out exactly what you need to do to start the company, exactly what you need to figure out in a step-by-step -step process. So that helps a lot when you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you're trying to open up a company, really, really lays out exactly what you need to do. So I would say those three are probably the most helpful because one helps you with the challenges you're going to face. One explains what makes a great company and one just literally helps you <laughs> to take your idea and make it into a company. Yeah. People don't, people are looking right now at us and, and people are listening. I'm holding up my phone and in my library, I have that book. Good to great. Yes. It is a great book to have. And the other book I was just listening to, it's a very short book. If I could find it. Uh, Actually, there's two great books, but this great book right here, stop, um, is The Five Temptations of a CEO. This one oh. by uh, Patrick Lencioni. And surprisingly, he does not live that far from me. And, oh. and every time he referenced something in the book, he was like, oh, we're having this meeting at this restaurant. I'm like, I know that restaurant. And then he started referencing a lot of things. I'm like, this dude lives near me. <laughs> so, but uh, I'm like, I got to meet, meet up with him sometime, but he's like super popular. So, I mean, his famous book is five dysfunctions of a team. So. Uh, oh, I know that book. I've read that book. It's amazing. Yeah. Book. yeah it's, a it's an amazing book. book. Yeah. I actually book. use it for coaching and avoidance of conflicts is the biggest one that I find a lot in teams, especially in business teams. Oh my gosh. So annoying. Sorry. I don't want to get <laughs> no, no worries. But yeah, that's, he's, that's an amazing book. I, I mean, I actually have like a big list of, I can send it to you later if you want to put it with the podcast, but I have a very big long list of recommendations for books. If anyone is, is looking to be an entrepreneur, so I can send that to you. We'll do Robin's book club list <laughs> in my, in my description below my, my podcast and my YouTube and we'll, well, she'll put some books up and I'll put some books up and that'll be amazing. So my next question to you is what, is, what are you currently listening to in podcasts and what are you currently reading? Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually reading a different kind of book right now. Um, I'm almost done. I've read it already like three times. So I just love this book. Uh, it's the, I'm sure you've, maybe you've heard of it actually. I, I think it's a pretty popular book, but um, it's called A Man's Search for Meaning. Love that book. No, never um, heard of it. It's really amazing. So <laughs> okay. it's, uh, this psychologist who actually lived through the Holocaust and he wrote a book about it and it's a really beautiful book. And it just, it's just like a feel good book, you know? Okay. So, well, well actually it's not a feel good book, but it's a feel good book from the meaning of it when you get to the end, because okay. the meaning is okay. a bit sad, but I uh, really, really love that book. Um, what I mean, I listen to different podcasts every day because they're short, you know? So um, I mean, I'm, I listen, I've been listening a lot to the all in actually, you know what, that's an amazing podcast for entrepreneurs and just to know what's going on in the world. Um, the all in podcast. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's with some really, really, really incredible founders like David Sachs, um, a few other people on there. Absolutely brilliant podcast. They go over a lot of different amazing things that are happening in the world. And it's just very interesting because it, it, kind of really goes over the market of like funding right now and what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. How is that going to affect things? And you, you really, really learn a lot. So if you just want to get like smarter, I would just recommend listening to that podcast. Um, but I, I've been, I was listening to that yesterday with my, with my boyfriend and they're just so smart. I just sit there. I'm like, geez. <laughs> I get that way when I'm at, cause I, I work for UC Berkeley. And when I start talking to some professor, I, I come out of that class going, I just felt like I gained like 10 brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like that's how I feel. Sometimes I, right? I, I stop a podcast and I'm like, wow, I do feel smarter. <laughs> right, exactly. So yeah. I want to circle back on one thing. And you were talking about this earlier and I just thought about it and accomplishments and goals for you and what I always ask my team, if they're saying, oh, we want to start this project. And I'm like, what does end look like? 
right? Yeah. For your companies that you're currently running, what does N look like for you for that? What are your goals yeah. and accomplishments? Yeah, I mean, it, with Luna Spurt, because that's the one that I definitely am spending the most of my time working on right now. You know, I, I just opened the company about a, like a year, almost a year and a half ago. And I'm not sure because I wasn't really planning on opening up the company and it just it's getting bigger and bigger and getting better. And I'm, at first I was like, oh, like, is this going to be a company where I just sell after a couple of years for fun? But I don't think so. I think that it's, I'm in it for the long run now and I want to take it to a certain point, but I think I just love opening companies. <laughs> so I don't know like at what point I'll be done, but I think I'll know when I am. And then if I need to find another CEO or whatever happens, but I think I always want to be involved in like new projects and things that I really care about. So I think my end goal is not necessarily like where the company ends up um, or like a specific number in mind for revenue. I think that that's a big focus, I think, for most people. But for me, because everything that we've done, you know, we don't have like any investors or anything like that because we don't really need them, which is great. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I don't really have like that this is when I'm done or this is what means success. I think I just want to continue to do them as long as I'm happy doing them. And then the moment that I feel like it's like too big for me and I want to get back to like start up the entrepreneur vibe, I'll just open something else. And I have like a bunch of other ideas for when I have the time anyway. And I'm working on like another project with a really good friend who's absolutely amazing uh, for another really big passion of mine, which is psychedelic medicine, actually. So it's a company in that space. So that's probably like the next project that I'm going to be really focusing on in the next few months. Um, and when it comes to the end goal, it's just what do I want to make room for for the next big project? Because I can't, I can't like have a million companies, you know? So it's, it's just like the goal is to continuously just be doing what I really love. And obviously be as successful as I can while I'm doing it and scale it and, and then kind of follow that format of like, you know, there's like very specific models and startup companies of like how much you need to be growing year over year and how many, like what the revenue should be at, all that kind of stuff. So my main goal is just to keep up with the traction that I should be at, that I, I know people a lot smarter than me that have done this a lot of times have made clear that this is how you get there. And just if I can keep up with that, then I'm really, really happy. Awesome. It sounds like, it sounds like you're always motivated just to always start something, which is awesome. We need more people like you. That's what we need in America, too. <laughs> not, not just in Canada. But in America. All well, it's, it's just, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, I think you gotta love it. I, I really like the startup vibe. I love building stuff that's new. I love like the beginning of putting things together and really in, in, like that scrappy startup vibe. I love yeah. it. <laughs> so the so rush and all that. that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I helped start up yeah. a, a department at UC Berkeley and that really, it felt like a startup because we were rushing and like, oh, that failed. Let's move on to something else and we'll get back to it later. Or, you know, we'll need to fix that one. And yeah, that, that's so much fun. Uh, Robin, I want to thank you for coming on to my podcast. I really appreciate you for taking the time out of your busy work day and, you know, running three companies. <laughs> and this is your opportunity in my podcast to talk about your three companies and where my audience could find your companies or more information about it. Maybe I'll put it in the description below. I'll pop them up somewhere. I don't know, somewhere, but go ahead. Yeah. Sure. So uh, the first, well, the first one hasn't completely launched yet, but there is Smart SaaS, which is going to be a platform for entrepreneurs that want to get their companies from about 100 million in revenue to 10 million. So it's just helping how to scale and what's the like exact formula and the exact templates and things that you'll need. Uh, so we're basically an e-learning company and soon we'll be releasing our courses and a bunch of different materials and templates. So you'll be able to find us on our website, which we're about to launch very soon, and also on our LinkedIn page. So I'll send you all of that when um, it's ready. We also have Loadly, which as you mentioned, is in the trucking industry. Essentially, we're a platform that connects the truckers directly to carriers um, and basically just helps them to get business without having to rely on the brokerage system. So that's already pretty launched. Um, our product is finished finally. So that's really, really exciting. You can find us at www.lobly.ai. Um, and that's really exciting because our products finally launched. And for anyone that knows anyone in the logistics industry in Canada, so whether it's a carrier or a truck 
trucking company or one trucker that has their own truck, they should check that out uh, to see if they'd be interested in signing up. And the other company is Luna's Consulting. So what we do is help all startups basically just book meetings, do lead generation or anything with their sales, any type of consulting or anything that has to do with revenue growth. Um, and you can find us at www.lunas.consulting and on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. So a bunch of different places. And you can reach out to us if ever you need some help doing appointment setting or booking meetings. That's the majority of what we do. Um, and you can find us there as well. So all that information, Robin's <laughs> going to give it to me. And we're going to put all that information in the description and everything else and in the link, everything, you know, podcast, everything. So even on Instagram, you'll find it, you know, their Instagram page and everything else. Awesome. Thank you so much. Can this is really fun. We got to do it again. Yes. And like, you know, you're, you're launching probably three more new companies and you turned over this, one. <laughs> who knows, right? So we, we got to see, keep, uh, uh, you know, what, we want to know your journey. So, so we got to have you back on the pod and see what, 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 what you've been up to you from in the future. <laughs> yes, this was a lot of fun and we should definitely do it again. And whenever you'd like, I'll come. <laughs> yeah. And it was really, really nice meeting you as well and learning a little bit more about your podcast because I really, really like this topic, especially yeah. the fact that you focus on common sense, which I think is something people forget <laughs> a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Take care, be kind, and be human. Thank you, Robin, for being on my podcast and YouTube video. Really appreciate it. For all the stuff we talk about for entrepreneurial success, her success, all the books, and her company, and herself, we'll put all her information below and her company and the book she read. We'll put it on the description. All right, everyone. Take care, be safe, and be human. Love y'all. Bye.